The West Norfolk community of Snettersham is like most British towns and villages. A war memorial at its heart bears the name of local men killed in the conflict. There are 45 of them. The lettering was polished to mark the centenary of the start of the war, but their individual stories had long been erased from public memory. I looked at that and thought, do we actually really remember these people 100 years on? We made a commitment at the beginning of the project to, to strive to visit each grave of, of each gentleman, and we've managed it. Seeing the number of, of burials and their ages, it's a bit overwhelming really. Let us remember before God and commend to his showkeeping. This year, representatives from Snettersham have travelled to the final resting place of every villager who died on active service. Edwin Percival. We felt that actually going the extra mile in this 100th anniversary and literally going and standing over those graves and saying to those men and their families, we know exactly who you are, we know what you did, and we're still thinking of you. Here in this place, let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping, Herbert Snell. Poppies and wreaths of West Norfolk lavender were left at each grave, along with a letter from a local child. Snettersham is a large village now, and you definitely would not recognise it. Some of their personal stories are heartbreaking. Uh, families that lost more than one child, uh, a lady who lost her husband and her brother. This project has helped us to remember these gentlemen as individuals, known and loved and remembered by us as a community. The Snettersham 45 spanned the full duration of the Great War. James Orker was killed in August 1914, just a few days after the first British soldiers arrived in France. Herbert Snell died in a German prisoner of war camp a month after the armistice. John and Charlotte Graver lost three of their sons, Harry, George and Bertie. Ernest Day, pictured in this 1907 school photo, lied about his age and joined the army when he was just 16, even though two of his older brothers had already been killed. He died two years later. A hundred years on, and the class of 2018 have played their part in bringing history to life. Thank you very much for having me here today. Um, I want to talk to you about what we have been doing at the British Legion um, coming up to the centenary of the First World War, which this plays a great part in, and also then to listen to you and to hear what you've been doing with your particular project. Pupils have adopted a soldier to write to, some of them direct descendants of the 45 who died. Nell Mitchell's ancestor Sidney made it home from the front despite a hand grenade exploding in his face, but he succumbed to his injuries three weeks after the war ended. Thank you again for saving our country. I love it here. Yours sincerely, Nell Mitchell. We brought our men and boys alive to our children now, because when people of my age pass on, we will have lost that connection. And I felt it very important that the children now realise, gosh, they were, they were kids like us. While many Snettersham men went to war, the war came to Snettersham. In January 1915, a German Zeppelin dropped a bomb adjacent to the village church, leaving a huge crater, which is still there today. Stained glass windows were blown out. The intended target was the royal residence of Sandringham, just over a mile away. Inside the church, the same names as on the town's war memorial. Among them, Charles Lincoln, killed just five months after enlisting in the army. His page on the newly created memorial website shows his mother and sister visiting his grave in France in 1920. Now, their descendants are getting to know him. I had some old family photos. My father told me a little about him, but my father was only seven when he died. I've been thinking over the last few days what made him decide at the age of 33 in 1917 to enlist. 
and I don't know the answer to that. I guess uh, he probably saw lots of his um, friends and relatives who were killed and he felt he ought to do something and join up. Their next of kin were presented with a bronze plaque by the government. Three quarters of a million British and Irish military personnel were killed. Harold Meek was the only one of the 45 who died at sea, his transport ship torpedoed by a U-boat off the coast of Egypt. His brother Percy survived the war, but he'd suffered severe shell shock as a result of the constant bombardment in the trenches. It left him paralysed, his limbs rigid, his plight documented on film. But after treatment, including the simple therapy of weaving baskets, he eventually made a full recovery and returned to Norfolk. The Snedisham 45 project has inspired relatives to retrace the steps of some of the fallen. So these are all unknown, aren't they? Josie Railton and her family have come to France, where two great-great-great-uncles are buried. Where is it? Can you see it? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah! Charlie Mitchell! That's the one. Charlie Mitchell almost survived the war. He was killed six weeks before the armistice. His battalion was caught in a machine gun ambush early one morning. What I hadn't realised is looking down the line, they're all Royal Fusiliers, and if you, as you go down the line, it's all the same day. It's a bit overwhelming, really. I think it's taken so long to get here. My dad spoke about coming here when we were little, and he's no longer with us, so it, yeah. yeah. And just seeing the number of of burials and their ages. It's a bit overwhelming, really. It feels like we knew him a little bit, and I think that makes it really difficult. And you can kind of relate to him in terms of he, he was roughly the same age as us when we got married, and I, I just feel that, you know, he'd have had all those thoughts that we had about starting a family and all that kind of thing. And, just never able to do it. The Allied line on the 11th of November, which is the end of the war, it was here. Was here. Josie's daughter, who she christened Poppy, was chosen to take part in a Royal British Legion photo call with the Prime Minister. She and her brother Elliot have written to their uncles. We think you were very brave but must have been scared. We want to, you to know that we are proud of you and will keep you in our memories. We will try to visit again. Love, Poppy and Elliot. If Charlie was, was here right now, what would, you, what would you be saying to Charlie? Why did you want to join? Join the, the army? Yeah. yeah. And why, why did you not want to stay with your family? You know you will get killed. So I would actually feel really sad. He went to the army. I would actually feel really sad. Little is left of the trenches which scarred the landscape and where vast numbers died and were swallowed up by the bombed and fractured earth, their bodies never found. A century later, remains are still being recovered. Their losses were so great, it was actually said you'd have to have bulletproof soldiers to take these positions. We find 20 to 30 bodies a year, and they can be given a proper burial. The names of 72,000 missing men are inscribed on the Thiepval Memorial. Among them, five men from Snettisham, including 21-year-old Corporal Percy Woods and Captain William Brown, who'd twice survived gunshot wounds in previous battles, but who lost his life at the age of 24. Now that is William Brown there, okay? Now what makes William Brown's story all the more remarkable is that he died on the 4th of September 1916 and on exactly the same day, in exactly the same battle, his brother Edwin was also killed, leading another company of the Norfolk Regiment. The final part of the Railton family's World War I journey took them across the border into Belgium and into Woodland, which became the final resting place for their other great-great-great-uncle. Have you found it's it? It's over there, yeah. You found it. Augustus Gus Mitchell. Again, 
Charlie's younger brother. He drowns in a flooded bomb crater. So we're going to put the lavender down from Norfolk. That's left us with a lot of questions, hasn't it? You've asked questions. How can you be in the middle of a wood and, and drown? That it could be really slippery. You could have been and he tried to use his hands, but his hands keep slipping. He could have been so slippy, yeah. It could and it got be stuck. In there, so he couldn't get out. Further research has revealed that, tragically, a second soldier drowned while trying to save Gus. And I just think being able to put the story and the name and the place together just makes it all a lot more real, and, and especially for the children, because they need that. Because otherwise it's, it's, just, it's just numbers, isn't it? It's just numbers and words to them. It doesn't mean anything until you're here and seeing it. The grim details of their deaths brings no comfort, but in a way, this has been a resurrection. Long gone, but no longer forgotten. There was pride in what they did. The fact that as a small village, our 45 men won two Distinguished Conduct Medals, an MBE, two military medals, all of them were heroes. The Snedisham 45 were just teenagers and young men. They never got the chance to grow old. After the war, their friends and relatives raised the money to pay for this memorial. And now, a century later, in the village they called home, they do remember them.